Well, I invest in seed companies, and where I started this was six years ago, I was trying to start a company, and I couldn't figure out how I was going to get it funded because I didn't want to raise a lot of capital. Mm -hmm. And I also didn't think I had a billion dollar idea. I thought maybe I had a hundred million dollar idea. And so therefore I knew nobody on Santa Road would give me the time of day. Too small for them. Too small. The, the, the VC math won't work if you have those types of exits. Right. And so I felt like, okay, why isn't somebody aligned with the idea of seed investing with that type of exit? Mm -hmm. Because I thought if that happened to me, I would be completely excited as an entrepreneur and I can't figure out why there wouldn't be an investor who'd be as excited right. except for maybe an individual investor. So I thought either because it's a bad idea or because it's the time has come because mm -hmm. the costs are so much cheaper now. So uh, again, this was six years ago. This is before AWS and some of the things that have been before innovated. Before Combinator. And all these things, right? right? And so I thought, well, I want to go do that. That's what I want my entrepreneurial activity to be. I want to found a fund as opposed to a company. Right. And so I went and pitched probably 50 people, institutional investors, individuals, and they all told me no. So I've mm -hmm. been down this path of how hard it is to raise capital. Mm -hmm. But f I kept with it. I believed in what I was trying to do and eventually was able to scrape $10 million together in 2006 mm -hmm. and started putting the money to work. And then yeah, that's good, what yeah. I do, exactly. And yeah. you, so you're now, you're now managing how much? Well, uh, last summer I raised $100 million, mm -hmm. and which of course six years ago was you know a twinkle in my eye, and uh, I've had that would be my I think that's, that would be essentially my fifth and sixth funds, mm -hmm. and so the nice thing is is that every fund I've done, even through the fifth fund, is all after this Instagram and uh, uh, exact target mm -hmm. and the oh my god pop. And we'll exits, talk about a couple of those in a second. We will, yes. I mean, every single fund is absolutely in the positive territory. So for every investor that's believed in me from the beginning, they've been rewarded handsomely for their belief in me. What's a typical investment size for you? It hasn't really changed a lot since I started. So and I'll, it, it, the hundred million breaks down into two parts. But when I started, uh, I was investing between two and five hundred k, and mm -hmm. that still is probably the same. If I think about the averages, it's uh, crept up a little bit, but on average, we'll call it today 500k up from 250k. And 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 this is just you're doing. You are the you are the fund. I you, am the fund. Yes. Do you have yes. staff? Do you have you're not, there are no other partners. I have I have a very very good admin who helps me <laughs> manage now, my time. Now, so so you now hold how many investments in how many companies? I think over the life of my investing career, I've invested in probably actually over 70. Uh, of which 18 have exited and only three have closed right. down. So there's still you know, 60 ish, 55, 60 something like. If you're if you're a traditional venture capital firm on Santo Road and you get those big deals, right? There are times when you see serious competition that drives up valuations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that at the seed end of the? Yeah, scale? in certain pockets for sure. I mean, there are uh, you know, prices ebb and flow and and uh, and have since I started the business. Mm -hmm. I mean, in 2007, prices went up. In 2008 and 9, they went down. In 2010, they creeped up again. But you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, and that's part of the free market system. Right. So you know, uh, I get to decide if I meet a great team, if I want to invest at the market clearing price or not. And that's to me the beauty of kind of this end of the marketplace. Is it is it in fact easier to kind of to to, to be an entrepreneur than it was five years ago, ten years ago? Oh, I think it is because. Um, Ten years ago, you needed five million dollars to start a website, and today you need essentially seventy dollars to get an AWS account for right. a month and uh, some coding skills. And I actually believe that this whole movement to teach more people how to code mm -hmm. is essentially um, you know, a, a hugely valuable set of tools. Which I think, if everybody learns to code, then they can go create their own anything on the site, whether it's an app, a website. A company or what have you, and so the ability to attract capital around any of those ideas is much easier than it was when I started, and it's far easier by an order of magnitude than it was even ten years ago. So, is there one that got away? Like, is there is there one deal that, as you've been, you know, I'm sure you see. I'm, I'm sure triage is a big part of your job, right? Trying mm -hmm. to figure out what to look at. Right. But is the, is, are there is there one that you kind of just hit yourself in the head? Go, I can't believe I didn't do that one. Well. If I did that, I'd probably knock myself out just because <laughs> in this business, if you're in it long enough, you have a long list of things that you wish you could have done or would have done right. or should have done. It, but I would posit it at the earliest stages, right. back to my 
your point about clairvoyance. Right. If you had the clairvoyance, you, you would do everything that right. was good, is that you just don't know. So um, I don't hit myself or beat myself up because I made the decision when I did at the time that right. I did, and then you know, based on a set of facts, and then if I've missed it, I try to learn from that. Right. Say, what did I not see in that right. thing? So uh, the, the list is long and distinguished. <laughs>